welcome you all into this another lecture of chapter work and energy. In the previous lecture of this chapter, we have discussed in detail about the various types of energy. We have discussed in detail about the potential as well as kinetic energy. So today in this lecture also, we are going to continue with the transformation of energy. So in today's lecture, we will focus on how these energies get transformed from one form to the other. And we will also discuss in detail about the rate of work that's power. So let's get started with the very first topic of this lecture that is the transformation of energy. So as here you can see that what is the transformation of energy? The change of energy from one form to the other. So I can mark here the change of one form of energy into the other form is known as transformation of energy. Now if I just want to discuss with you day to day life example, let us suppose we have a stone that is lying on the roof of a house. Now if I ask you what type of energy that stone is having, just try to think. It is at some height from the ground, so it is having potential energy. Now let us suppose this stone starts falling from that height. Now as it is falling, so its height from the ground is continuously decreasing. So its potential energy starts decreasing. But it doesn't mean that this energy is not transforming into any other form. As it is falling, it is moving, it is having a kinetic energy. So when it was at some height, it was having potential energy. And as it starts falling towards the ground, that potential energy starts converting into kinetic energy. So as that stone is falling towards the ground, continuously its potential energy is decreasing as its height from the ground is decreasing and its kinetic energy is increasing as it is accelerated towards the ground. So as the velocity as it is moving towards the ground is increasing, this is the reason why kinetic energy is increasing. So here we have concluded from this discussion that when an object is released from a height, then the potential energy of the object changes into the kinetic energy. So here in this case we have seen that how potential energy of the object has changed into the kinetic energy. Now you must be thinking that is there only the transformations from the potential energy to the kinetic energy? So I will say no. We all know that sun is the ultimate source of all the types of energy and now I am just going to tell you the transformation of energy in nature and we are going to start with the energy of wind. We all know that wind blows because of the uneven heating of the earth's surface and that uneven heating of the earth's surface is responsible for the blowing of wind and the blowing wind actually have kinetic energy and that kinetic energy of the blowing wind is utilized in wind energy farm in rotating the blades of the windmills. The rotation of the plates of the windmill is actually associated with the rotation of the shafts of the generator to generate electricity. So as the wind blows, the blades rotates and those rotating blades rotates the shaft of the generator which generates electricity. So here you have seen how the solar energy changes into wind energy and that wind energy is utilized in generating electricity. So this is the transformation of energy. Moving on to the next type of transformation that is the energy from food. Now in this case we know that all the plants prepare their food by the process of photosynthesis and for that also they require sunlight. So they utilize sunlight to prepare their food which get stored in them in the form of chemical energy. And when humans and animals eat those plants, that chemical energy gets stored in them also. And then when we do all the type of various activities and we say we require energy for that, that energy is coming from the food that we eat. And the energy in that food comes from the solar energy. Further moving on to the next type of energy that the energy of the fossil fuels. The bodies of the animals and plants after their death when it gets buried deep under the earth crust for millions and millions of years ago and that created fossil fuels like coal, petroleum, natural gas. So even we can say that 
the solar energy is responsible for the stored energy in plants and animals and when they get buried deep under the earth crust for millions of years then the fossil fuels are formed so here you have seen that how the solar energy changes into the energy or the chemical energy that is stored in fossil fuels and then fossil fuels are further used to generate heat energy to generate electricity or in the various forms of energy moving on to the other type that is energy from water again we know due to the sun heat the water evaporates from rivers from lakes and that contributes to the formation of clouds and when rains the water gets stored in the dam and when that stored water is allowed to fall on the turbines again the turbines rotates and that turbine is associated with the shaft of the generator to generate electricity so here also you have seen that how solar energy plays a very important role in contributing towards the energy of the flowing water as well so here also i have shown you that how the transformation of energy in nature occurs so i hope you have cleared your doubts with the transformation of energy from the one form to the other now it's very important to verify that whether this transformation of energy is actually valid or not so let's move on to the next segment of this lecture and discuss in detail about the law of conservation of energy